I got a 2003 Passat here. Customer went through a deep puddle and uh, the engine stalled. It's a TDI. Uh, I think this is one of our guys. It looks like one of my screws. Yep, water ingestion. See how much comes out. Rainy season. People don't pay attention. Yeah, it's just the puddle. Another benefit of having a screw in here, eh? Let's see how long she'll drain. Ah, she's slowing down a little bit. Maybe not, huh? Still going pretty good. And I'm quite sure the engine hydraulic so um or hydro hydro locked. So I'm gonna try to turn it later. But uh just thought I'd show you guys my first steps here with the suspicion of water in the system uh, or a vehicle dying after going through a puddle. The air intake is above the grill, so that tells you how high the water got uh, when he went through the puddle. And um, wow, it's still going. That's over a liter of water easily so far. And then just imagine how much got into the engine. The uh, This is actually the inlet here. Well, just like all the other TDIs, the inlet is on the bottom here. Uh, and then all of this here is potentially full with water. This is a, a metal brace. Um, the front engine mount is right here. Uh, so it runs along here. This is the turbo outlet right up there. There's a turbo, so potentially all of the, this is also still full with water. Gonna keep it live for you guys in terms of uncut. Uh, that's the way people like it. I'm gonna take this hose off here later. I'm also gonna take this one off and I'm gonna blow compressed air through here. But first, I'm gonna see if I can crank this thing manually. Uh, I might move the bumper into service position so I can get a wrench on here. I don't really want to crank the engine uh, if I don't have to. Uh, that was a really good sized puddle that he go went through. It's been raining like crazy these last few days. But uh, unless you're the first guy going through the puddle you know, I guess you don't, you don't know how deep the puddle is until you go through it. But if you have somebody in front of you that, you know, halfway disappears, uh, I would, I would uh, think about whether or not you want to follow the guy through the puddle or not. Fairly clean underside now because of it. Uh, clean relatively speaking obviously it's dried uh, dirt here but uh, all that water must have washed off some debris still going it's got to be at least two liters once it stopped once it's uh, down to a trickle I'll stop the camera and then uh, I'll give you guys an update afterwards
drain in for five minutes. I gotta keep an eye on this thing. I don't want that sucker overheating. Oh, it just stopped. No! Yeah, as soon as I move the camera. There we go. One more. One more. Come on. I guess that's it. So yeah, uh, next step is to take the hose off here and here. Uh, and then also, obviously, uh, Cranky the engine by hand. See if it rotates. I'll put I'll put this in a contain in a graduated container so you guys can see how much fluid it was. Okay, so I took the intercooler hose off here. This is where I initially drained in. I took this elbow off. I took this one off, and when I took this one off, it had some more water come out. Now I'm just gonna blow some air into here because again this is a metal pipe that most likely has more water in it uh, still a bit not that much blow back the other way Ideally, what you want to do is remove this guy in so you can tilt it, uh, you know, and let it drain out fully. Uh, intercooler is pretty much empty. Now we got to check what's up, what's in the engine itself. So this is about a liter, just a, under a liter and a half. So you can see the intake here, still wet. This is the intake snorkel. So, so the puddle must have been high enough for water to go through the through the grill here, through here, into the air filter, past the MAF sensor. That's the MAF sensor. You can see some wetness in here still. Into the turbo, across the bottom, into the cooler, up along the charge piping here. Uh, these ho This section of piping is most likely empty of water because it's a downward slope. Um, there's a bit of a rise here and then there could be some water up in here still. So I'm going to take this guy off. Uh, but judging from the amount of water and the fact that it died out, um, it's uh, most likely going to be an engine that it's going to need. And I'm not sure if he's going to want to go for it or not. Um, I was hoping to get at the crank bolt here to see if I can turn it by hand, uh, but that involves moving the front end into service position. And I'm going to have to check with the boss to see if I get a go ahead for that. Okay, so I got the intake clamp loose here, and uh, you might have just seen a little drop. So I'm just moving the hose back away from the intake. So that definitely confirms that water got into the intake manifold and uh, into the engine. And so here's the intake, that's the EGR, sorry, the EGR here, that's the uh, uh, shutoff flap, intake flap motor, EGR, intake manifold. So uh, I still haven't gotten a chance to turn it by hand. I might actually just see if I can cr crank it with the starter. But uh, you know, people are worried about, oh, you know, you're compressing it, you're causing damage. Well, you know, odds are damage is done already. I mean, look at how much, look at how much water came out. Okay, so I took the uh, glow plugs out and I gave it a bit of a crank and I already saw some water coming out. So I'm going to crank it a little bit more. Uh, 
Ja. Det gick ju bra. Ja. Okej. Okay. Okay, ready? Ja. Again. Maybe just 10 seconds for the starting point. Yeah. Let it cool it again, yeah. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. I got all the air hoses off right now. It's just running from air here. Intercooler is disconnected right now at the bottom. Bath sensor too. Might be lucky, but uh, no guarantees. No guarantees, that's for sure. So I drove this car with the uh, drain screw out, uh, leaving just the 1 8 inch hole and uh, I data logged the specified and actual boost readings. Uh, no code was set in terms of boost leak and uh, the boost followed the specified. Obviously with the test drive in terms of the scan da data there is a bit of a delay but uh, if it's specified 2300 millibars, it, it, it reached that amount. If it was specified at 1500 millibars, uh, it had no problems meeting those specifications. Uh, the link to the graphs or the uh, waveforms is in the description, so feel free to download it, watch it with the Snap-on ShopStream Connect software. Um, and then you can see for yourself, even with the screw left out of the picture, out of the cooler, there is no boost leak. Hi guys, uh, so here's the waveform, actually the data stream capture, data stream capture of that TDI while driving it with the intercooler screw removed, leaving a hole. Where's my little pointer? A 1 8 inch hole, which is probably as big as this felt tip pen caution. Uh, objects in webcam might appear bigger than, in, than they actually are. So anyways, uh, here's the data capture. You can see specified uh, boost level, current boost level, or current charge air pressure. Uh, I data logged the MAF sensor as well, as well as engine RPM. So you can see me here during the test drive, uh, engine speed increasing and I shift gears, engine speeds drop and increase. Uh, then I decelerate and I accelerate again. Here I'm at idle, etc., etc. MAF sensor obviously responds equally. Uh, you'll only get a really high MAF sensor reading under high boost, high demand, which I, I had down here. Um, so I had a peak MAF reading of 1210 and uh, peak boost specified at that point. Sorry, I'm look, I keep looking at the numbers down here, but uh, I should be looking at here. So at this point here, specified was 2377. Let me go back a little bit. 2397. Uh, whereas here at the current charge, uh, yes, it's a little bit lower, but it it did go up to 24. Now the lagging behind, these are not going to be um, occurring at the same time. Don't forget the computer is looking at, let's say, 40, 40 different d data blocks within a given amount of time. From those 40, one, two, three, four. I'm selecting four of those data pids. Depending on where those data pids are in that data stream, the computer takes X amount of time to to get to get information for those values, as well. Then it needs to send that information to my scan tool. So there there will be a lag. Um, what the computer actually sees uh, that will be close to instantaneous in terms of um, how should I say. Uh, when it reads those inputs, um, it, it can obviously not uh, take all the information in at once and process it all at once. Uh, it too receives information from here, from here, from here. Uh, it does its calculations and then it spits out the information to me, to my scan tool, as I requested it. So yes, there will be a delay. But what you have to think about is that 
the computer asked for a peak of let's say 2397 um, yes the peak goes down here by the time the actual reaches that peak of 2400 um, so, so it's not a matter of the boost being late it's a matter of when that data got to the scan tool so that I can see it uh, if I'm explaining things correctly um, the point being is that there is no boost leak okay uh, I think the service manual does say if, if I can get the information I'll put it in this video um, in terms of boost leak what triggers what what's the criteria for a low boost condition code to, to uh, be flagged and, and obviously there has to be a minimum amount of millibars let's say 500 millibars for two seconds or whatever if the computer sees a difference between specified and actual of 200 millibars 500 millibars for its X amount of time then yes that boost code will be set okay be it over boost or under boost doesn't matter um, so an 1 8 inch hole does not equal a boost leak There is a tip. Grab a felt tent, felt marker. It's a um, what do, sharpie. It's a sharpie pen. Grab one of those. Look at the tip, and uh, do some thinking about that. Okay. I put a screw in it, so I don't know what what the big deal is about people constantly saying, "What are you going to do with the hole?" I put a screw in it. Um, I was going to say sorry that if I, if I sound upset, but it, it gets a pretty. Um, mundane um, it, it's frustrating saying the same thing over and over um, it's annoying as well no it does not need a catch can okay um, put a catch can in it doesn't matter I don't care I drain the coolers and in this case I drained water <laughs> anyways uh, download the um, waveform it's in the description sorry the, da the data capture download it um, download the software, install it on your PC. I don't think there is a Mac or Apple friendly version uh, unless your your uh, Mac computer can uh, run the Windows program or whatever they call it. You know, when you em emulate a PC, then obviously you can run it on your Mac as well. Uh, download it, install it, play with it, look at it, um, have fun. Thanks for watching.